Hello, everyone. Welcome to 96 Boards Open Hours, sponsored by Lenaro. Uh, today, it's uh, in between the holiday lull. I think it's the 23rd episode, and uh, we are right in between, smack dab in between like, what you would call Christmas and, and the New Year's. So this is uh, right in the middle of the holidays. We, we uh, are hoping, and it looks like already the, the chat is lighting up a bit uh, with regards to some questions and hopefully some comments. We have a lot of our, a couple of our regulars in here too. So um, we'll kind of maybe spark up some conversation and see where we can go with that. But a uh, quick announcement. Last week we met with John Mad Dog Hall. And what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna share the YouTube link to the video from last week. You can always find it on www.96boards.org slash open hours. Uh, there you'll get to see the latest video as well as the link to our YouTube channel among many of our other social media channels. So I'm going to share this in the chat. This is the most recent or last week's open hours episode. It was really cool. We talked about uh, actually pretty much Mad Dog talked for about two hours. <laughs> it was a it was a long episode, a lot longer than normal, but hey, that's a holiday special. We talked about SBCs, so single board computers on the market. Uh, not just 96 boards. In fact, we talked about everything. Um, what makes up an SBC, why certain things might be more important to you as a user, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a lot of really cool stuff. Check it out. We do still plan to push out the slideshow from that day, uh, as well as a hopefully a blog. Um, but as you know, uh, during the holidays, it's pretty hard to get certain things done. So uh, we will be pushing for that hopefully in the first two weeks of the new year. 2017. Awesome. Okay, so um, Mark, you you as my my seasoned veteran here in open hours might need to help me with some of these questions because uh, so I can already see the things that I am not sure of. But we'll address a private question that happened right now from Ali, um, and uh, you feel feel free to post that into other chat if you want to. But the only way I'm going to be able to address it is is over the over the the calm, right? Um, but basically, the question is: I purchased two MIPI camera boards from AI Star Vision. I couldn't find any test source code, or I could not send email to Kevin. Okay, so I'm going to send you a link to the to the source code here. And just so you do know, we do have a page on 96boards.org. Um, so on 96boards.org, if you go to the mezzanine page, and I'm going to share this link, on the bottom right, currently on the bottom right, you'll see MIPI adapter mezzanine. If you click that, um, there's a big, uh, a big list, well, a list of about four items on the right side. There you should find uh, links to how to purchase it on, on eBay, and as well as their GitHub repository, uh, along with a getting started document that they put together. So that being said, you should have access to their GitHub repository. Uh, from what I from what I was told is that with that you can get started with the Dragon Board, at least with the Dragon Board. So I hope that helps. Um, it does say the cameras that were tested, so you can get the OB5645, OB5640, or the OB7251 module. Those three cameras should be should work with the Dragon Board on that on that MIPI adapter. Um, I guess I'll share the GitHub repository too real quick. So there you go, github.com slash Kevin W S C U slash Dragon Board 410C dash camera. Perfect. I hope that answers your question there, Ali. Hi Christine. Welcome. Were you having problems with your stuff earlier? Yeah. Um, so the presentation. The presentation isn't up yet. Um, I was just explaining right now that you know during the holidays it's kind of hard to get a lot of things done. So, uh, so we're in this lull right now where I might not be able to do much until the first week of January. Which I mean, I'm hoping to get all of that set up and posted the first week of January. Um, all right, what's next? We have Larry Bank with two questions. Looks like th three questions, and this is the one maybe you can help out with, Mark. But um, I wish. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've read them three times. It's kind of like, I'm not really sure what he's asking, but it's outside my knowledge base. <laughs> well, I know the one thing is that 
if you're talking about any use of graphics, and this is to my knowledge, right? Come back next week and we'll have more Lenaro engineers on the case, but you don't really have access to the graphics on or the, the GPU on the Dragon Board. So SDL, I'm kind of looking up um, what you can do with that simple direct media layer. And I'm guessing maybe that's within the GPU. I don't, I'm not, I'm not really sure. So if you want to elaborate a little more on that, um, that's not my area of expertise. Uh, but um, I mean, next week we can have more people in here and I'm pretty sure that would spark up a bit of a discussion. I have a guess yeah. that could be totally wrong. Um, and I want to be very clear. This is only a guess. Um, the Quark, the Dragon Board has basically a proprietary graphics chip on it, and it takes code to make it work. And there's a possible one of the things Mad Dog went through yes uh, on the sh prior show, which was an excellent show by the way, and well worth watching. Uh, he literally did teaching of a level that's information is very hard for people to pull together by themselves but it's the kind of high level knowledge that everybody really needs and one of the things he said was that a lot of times vendors who are making boards will cut corners and not pay royalties for certain things uh, in order to make them as inexpensive as possible and while i don't know this is true i'm thinking the dragon board may actually fall into that kind of category and if so there may be drivers support where royalty can be paid for it we the rest of us just hadn't spent the time to find that or figure that out yet do you think that may, might even be a possibility robert Yes. So, I mean, I know that there's big pushes for kind of creating this open, uh, what you would call like open GPU, right? Um, and basically providing a specification and, uh, and then companies could pick up on this and throw it on their boards, right? So that way, that way we don't have to, um, I guess, come across this as often as we do. Uh, but um, for now, I don't think that, and I, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around what you just said, Mark, but. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it, it kind of goes like this. Which chip is it? Who is the manufacturer of it? Contact that manufacturer and see if, if there is royalty available for code to turn on those features. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that, I think for now, uh, the only boards that you actually have like full access to, and again, this could also be wrong, is the is the high key. Um, and I ripped my board apart yesterday because I went to go show some people stuff, but the high key and the bubble gum also. So those two boards, and I'm giving away a bubble gum. That was another announcement. I'll, I'll be giving away a bubble gum next week. Um, we got, I think, somewhere around 50 participants on the the Twitter feed. Right around there. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, um, the show last week was just so busy. You ended up not being able to do the things you had planned. Man, there was so much stuff I had planned too. Um, we'll have to recover that episode for sure, or at least recover what I wanted to do. Maybe that's what we'll do next week because I wanted to, I wanted like a heated debate, you know, between people on what what they think should be should be uh, the perfect SBC, you know. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Um, I hope that did, did that help you out, Larry? You know, I'm no GPU expert, so frame buffer access is something that's enabled in the kernel needs a specific modification. Yeah, so um, there's a perfect person that we can talk to on this. You know, have you, Larry, by chance, are you part of our IRC um, channel? Do you go into our IRC channel on Freenode? Freenode IRC? Um, you know, you can you can join our IRC channel if you are familiar with IRC. The channel is 96 boards. Okay, so so let me give you a link to this. This is just a, a free place you can go, free node IRC. And if you um, if you type in, just create a nickname, any nickname you want, and that is uh, webchat.freenode.net. Just create a nickname, and then under the channel. You can put hashtag 96 boards or hashtag Lenaro. 
Now, don't expect to really get an answer, uh, uh, honestly, until um, next week, sometime after the 3rd of January. But there are a lot of people in there who there are a lot of people in there who have uh, who have a plethora of knowledge around all of these boards. Um, hey, Mad Dog. Oh, Mad Dog joined. Oh, Mad Dog. Good morning. Sounds encouraging that someone will know the answer. Yes, someone will know the answer. And in fact, normally someone on this call would know the answer. Um, but again, this is a uh, it's holiday time. And um, we don't really have, I mean, maybe Mad Dog might know the answer, but right now uh, our, our, our veteran engineers aren't exactly here. Uh, they're all probably uh, drinking margaritas on a beach somewhere. So uh, that, that'll kick back off next week. Um, let, me, let me address this question from Ali. So to test the MIPI camera board, uh, is there anybody who tested the MIPI camera board for Dragon Board? So the people from AR Star Vision have, have tested it. And I, in fact, I have one right here, though I have not hooked it up, right? I mean, this is the one, the board Ali is talking about. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's either Ali or Ali. Um, this is the board that that um, Ali is talking about. And essentially, this was the one offered by AI Star Vision, and it is available uh, for purchase on the 96 Sports website. It'll take you to eBay, and you can, let me just pull that up real quick take you to eBay, you can get a copy of yours, and then there's several cameras that are available to you on that board um, or available uh, to that function with that board. Um, and then, uh, so did you, Ali, did you get my my message that I just said um, with regards to uh, the, the GitHub repository and the getting started guide? Okay, so I would suggest going through the getting started guide um, if, if it's still not working, if you can't get through the getting started guide, then I'm not sure. I would suggest contacting that. Okay, so you went through the getting started guide and you still can't get the cameras to work. Is that what you're saying? Um, usually, what 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 might be a good uh, what might be a good avenue for you? It looks like they already have two issues. So OV5640 autofocus not working yet and then OV5640 image quality. So there's a couple issues that have already been raised on their GitHub repository. Um, you can open an issue there. I'm pretty sure they'll address that. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to shoot me an email at robertwolf.lenaro.org. And if you send me an email, I will uh, add Kevin and, and Wayne. Those are the two people who, who worked on that board. I'll add them to the thread. Make sure that you word your question out with as much detail as possible when you email me. Uh, word it out as, as it, like when you're talking about what, when you went through the getting started guide, where is it that, that you think you messed up on or they, they messed up? And we'll try to get this all settled because they, they want people like you helping them, right? They're, they're very happy that you found, <laughs> they're very happy that you found mistakes, I'm sure of it. So, so let's uh, let's help them let's help them make their the the user experience for this board better. Um, if I may. Yo, Keith, what's up? Hey, I didn't know you joined back again. Oh yeah, I, uh, I was in the midst of a transmittal from LTE to Wi-Fi, so I dropped out. But um, using their code, I actually well we because it was my uh, my boss out in Ontario that did this. We managed to use modify and use their code to get a CSI2 camera running on the Dragon Board, uh, the, sorry, the Aero Core for Dragon Board. Uh, oh. So um, we don't have our own camera module yet, but we did manage to jerry-rig something and get a camera working through the, uh, through the Aero Core. So uh, the code, uh, I'll have to look and check what I changed, but uh, the code was good and it just needed an update for the more recent kernel. That's it. Okay, cool. So, so I mean, already, uh, did you commit that? Well, I mean, I guess that would be um, AeroCore specific, huh? Yeah, some of it is. Uh, there, there was some uh, GPIO changes I needed to make to the device tree, and I think there's actually one element that needed to change for in in their actual driver that needed to change for the uh, more recent kernel. Um, but beyond that. Uh, 
yeah, it was pretty AeroCore specific. I'll take a look at it, and if there's something helpful there, I will I will uh, do a, a pull request. Very cool, very cool. Thanks, Keith. That's awesome. Um, I wanted looks to. Like, looks like Larry left. Um, unfortunately, that may have been what he needed, but uh, we can he can always ask again next time, I guess. Um, before the show started, you were introducing a board from Arrow. Uh, that don't really know what the deal is, but I think that's worthy of being on the air. Yeah, actually, a good point. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Yeah, so so right here I have this new board I was just told about last week, I believe. Um, it's called the Audio Mezzanine, and this is specific to the Dragon Board 410C. Now, um, it's available right now on Arrow for $5. And um, this is just kind of a preliminary announcement, right? We're gonna hopefully have someone from Arrow coming on here sometime in the next, uh, within January, to show us some cool demos on things that they can do, that you can do with this. Now this is, is considered right now the audio mezzanine, right? Because what it's doing is, I don't know if you've ever noticed on a dragon board. Now let me pull up a, one of the ones that you guys are used to seeing, which would be the blue ones. But so we have a blue dragon board right here. And if you notice right here, you have a set of two by eight um, header uh, pins. These are also two millimeter pitch, but what we call this header is the analog header. And um, on the analog header, you have access to uh, multiple microphones um, as well as uh, uh, the ability to hook in a headset, right? But um, there's, no, there's no jacks on here, right? So what you can do is you can solder on a, a header to these, to these pins, and then you can plug in this mezzanine uh, card. And what this mezzanine card does, and you can see right here, is it hooks in to the low speed expansion header, it hooks into the high speed expansion header, and it snaps in to the analog expansion header. And it brings out quite a bit of, of IO here. Now, I was looking through this, and I haven't had the chance to hook this up or anything, but after just a short call with one of the people from Arrow, they pointed out that um, you can see we have the through pin, low speed expansion header that comes up. It breaks it out into a 2.5 millimeter pitch um, header right here, which is similar to what you'll see on a Raspberry Pi um, uh, type, type deal there. And then you have uh, the high speed expansion header, which is broken out. And then on this side, there's a 3.5 millimeter jack for your headset. And you also have the UART broken out here so that you can access serial console, as well as quite a bit of IO right there. So I was reading through this. It looks like you have access to all the GPIOs, UART zero. Yes, yeah, so I see um, some I2C there, uh, A through B, C, D, I, F, E. There, there's, a, there's a variety of the GPIOs available. And I have not yet checked out what these switches do. However, I'm just looking at this right now, and it looks like this switch right here allows you to toggle between 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So already some of the stuff that we were talking about not too long ago on the community mezzanine that we were talking about making, um, this is already starting to show some of the stuff that we wanted, right? So this looks like you can toggle between the 3.3 volts and the 5 volts. Um, it breaks out the header and makes it to a 2.54 millimeter pitch. Um, there's power reset buttons, 3.5 millimeter jack, the UART, uh, all sorts of cool stuff on here. So, and it's $5, right? That, I mean, that's, that's pretty cheap. And now granted, if you do buy this, I'm gonna share this again real quick with everyone. If you do buy this board for $5, you are going to also need to buy um, the little connectors. And I, I should actually find that just to post it, because you're gonna need the, the pins to solder on to the board. And let me just find this real quick, because there is a link to that. Uh, great. So Mad Dog, what's up? Well, I, well, I find this link, thanks for coming back. We were talking about your show the other day. Um, so today I was, I'm up in Toronto, Canada. I'm work, working at the uh, Linux Professional Institute offices and working with some of the people in our staff up here. We're in the process of developing uh, a DevOps certification 
and I'm doing some work with that as well as preparing for our end of the year board meeting. So I'm sorry I was a little late. Uh, I got involved with discussions of board with board members before the meeting. So. No, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, I saw so that you. I saw that you published the video and that stuff. I haven't even had a chance to watch it. So, I'd like to watch it and and try and uh, respond to some answers or questions or comments that people have. Yeah, Mark was uh, was pointing out that I guess uh, Blue Jeans cut us off at two hours. So uh, apparently that's the cap. Uh, we, we lost we lost quite a bit of of the after hours, like the last like fifteen or. 20 minutes of the questions so unfortunately we don't have that on there i don't know i'll have christine try to contact them so we can recover it yeah the other thing i've been thinking about is there were a couple of uh issues at the very beginning of trying to get the slides up and everything i don't know how that turned out but what i would like to do is to take the presentation i did straighten it out a little bit more make it flow a little bit more and then re-record it and perhaps replace the one that's there with uh, with this re-recording. I should be able to do that probably in the first week of January. Well, and, so, uh, yeah, we can we can we can add. So I mean, tr traditionally, like what happened was, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll we'll talk offline about doing that. I mean, we can always we can always replace stuff. That's like, I mean. Um, that, that's like that's like the open hours video. We can always what we do. What we should do is I think re-record the presentation, and then okay. what we can do is at the beginning of that presentation on the open hours video, we can pop up a link and just say like, "Hey, this was a live recording. Please forward. Please go see the actual presentation here or something like that." Or, yeah, I think or, that or something I'd really like to see is a show series based on that where you get to take the time to go promote that Mad Dog's teaching, which will bring attention to open hours and bring people into the show, helping snowball, in effect, the uh, attendance ship here. Uh, I think that's the kind of promotion this needs. I mean, yeah, that could, that could work too. We could split it up into like three or four episodes or something. One of the reasons for re-recording it and putting it in, and doing some minor changes to it um, would be to use it as that. But I like the idea of just re-recording the presentation and then hit linking in the comments of, of after hours to that presentation. Um, because you guys are all knowledgeable, very knowledgeable. And so if you remember, I went very quickly over some definitions and stuff like that, that if you're trying to bring in newer people that aren't as familiar with the industry and aren't as familiar with that, I think I need to spend a little bit more time on the definitions. I did not want to do that during, uh, during this because you guys are very knowledgeable. But if I was to re-record it, I would put in more time with the definitions and then we would have we could put in uh, pointers to timing marks going through the presentation to say, oh, this is what's going to be talked about at this timing mark and so forth and so on. So the new user, the newbie coming in, could start at the beginning and go on through, and yeah. the person who's looking for some specific information could go to the timing mark and go on from there. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, uh, real quick, I, I mean, I want to keep talking about this, but I think that, I mean, are, are you guys fine if I turn the recording off now? Because I think that, I mean, unless it seems like it's just us in here, unless Keith, Ali, or Ragnar have any more questions, um, I, I don't know. Or input. Or statements or input, because um, there are some things that, that I, I did want to talk about, but I don't think that, I mean, it's not worth recording. People will just be sitting on the call. Um, they're sitting on the YouTube video being like, why did they even record this? <laughs> so uh, any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to stop it. Off. I'm going to stop it now. Just um, one quick observation. Did your GNU put your penguin? Did your GNU put your penguin to sleep back there? No, I so I redid my whole desk. Actually, um, the it's kind of funny story, but I don't know why the heck I was doing this. My desk, I had my computer tower right here to the right side. And it's a huge tower. It took up like one third of my desk, right? And so I was thinking the other day, I'm like, man, it would be nice to have all of this room. And so basically, in fact, my girlfriend pointed it out. She was like, 
she was like, why don't, why do you have it up there? Why don't you put it on your desk? And I'm like, duh. <laughs> so then I started moving all this stuff around and the penguin got shuffled. Back yeah, there. embarrassed him. Yeah. Yeah. So all my, all my stuff got moved around uh, quite a bit. And now I actually have room to do stuff on my desk, which is so nice. Your, your new ones are out for delivery. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's really cool. Yeah, another thing that um, came up. Let me grab this out of my backpack. This is really cool. So we're in the market right now for possibly uh, getting a new case. Now, this is kind of a surprise. And if anyone watches this video, which we don't really average too many watches, but it's a new case from a company called Shape Media. And um, this is still in the market, but this is a uh, a piece of aluminum from a so from a solid block of aluminum, they they machine out this custom case, and this will be for um, dragon board, high key, ninety six boards essentially. And what it is is it's a full blown heat sink for the for the board. Ooh, so it, nice. Yeah, so it sits on it's it, it covers the board, and then you have this special thing that screws in, and they've tested. Um, like extreme temperatures, low and high, uh, and then uh, also um, they've they've tested you know like uh, uh, physical harm to the board and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, we are really hoping to get um, this on board, but there are a few few T's to cross and I's to dot before we can do this. But you might be in for some surprises in 2017 with regards to some really cool accessories that will be coming out for 96 boards. We're hoping you get, you get, you get to get rid of that fan. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so I, I will point out something that some of the components have a temperature range of only 40 degrees Celsius and in places in Brazil, it gets even hotter than that. So even though you have a terrific heat sink, it still requires a heat exchange across that heat sink. And so if the outside ambient temperature is greater than 40 degrees centigrade, the heat sink is not gonna do any good. Ah, and actually on the opposite end of the scale here in Alaska, we get 60 below or worse. So if you wanna to try to use it outside, the other end of the scale becomes a problem. Yeah, no, that's absolutely, that's absolutely right. Yeah, so I mean, it would be, there, there would be extenuating circumstances that, <laughs> That would definitely hinder that. Um, but uh, he's trying. He, he has been working in a. In an, in, his tests have been done in an environment like San Diego, which is a pretty uh, external neutral, right? Like it's not too hot, it's not too cold, so it's kind of perfect for the testing, right? Um, I wonder if he did any tests like in a vacuum or you know not in a in a hypothetical vacuum, like testing different temperatures like that, creating external. Um, that's the kind of industrial testing most people don't think of until a customer confronts them with, have you really tested this? It, it's not natural to think about that until you have the experience for it. Yeah. Yeah. So let me show you real quick. I, I'll share my screen, but this is kind of the idea of what, what it might end up looking like. Oh, I, I don't know if I can share that image because it has trademark on there. This one right here is better that I can share. So here we go. This one's pretty cool. Screen. So this is kind of what it looks like. If you, can you see that? Mm -hmm. So th this is a this is a this is a brief glimpse of what it might look like. Um, but essentially, you have this little slit right here on the right side for the antennas uh, to bring out the antennas. Everything is just very clean, very very uh, very tight. And um, and it's made out of a single block of aluminum, so that's pretty cool. Either way, we'll see how it goes. Um, did I stop sharing? Um, I'm going to stop the recording now, though. Are you guys okay with that? Sure. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, checking out our video, our open hours video. And uh, thank you all for coming. We will be hanging around for after hours now. So I hope you all have a nice day, rest of your holidays. Everything is great. See you in the new year. Thank you very much. Take care. Oh, and uh, yeah, also don't forget to visit us on www.96boards.org slash open hours. All right, I'm going to turn the recording off.